Hello and welcome to a special edition of the State of the Fleet Industry video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine. And this series is designed to put a spotlight on today's fleet management industry and the leaders that are within it. And today I have an honor to interview Mike LaRue, a Director of Fleet for Bill Napleton National Fleet Sales. And today Mike is going to be talking with us about the origins of the fleet dealer segment, the role that it currently plays in today's fleet market, and we'll also explore the future that fleet dealers are going to play in this industry. So with that as a background, I'd like to thank you for joining us, Mike. Thank you, Mike. A pleasure to be here, and I'm honored to be uh, to be interviewed today. Perfect. And we're honored likewise. I mean, you're really one of the true pioneers in the fleet dealer segment that's out there. So, you know, based on your experience of working in the fleet dealer segment since 1979, you know, I'd like to start our discussion by exploring the origins of fleet dealer segment and um, have you identify what were some of the key milestones that influenced the evolution of the fleet dealer market over the decades to what it is today. How would you interpret that? Well, when I started in 1979, uh, fleet was already uh, in process. Uh, I worked for a large uh, Chevrolet fleet dealer. Uh, that was run by Don Fenton, who was one of the pioneers in, uh, in the fleet industry. Uh, I believe Don started back in the early 1960s, and uh, he, uh, he built up a, a, a crew of people and uh, offered us opportunities uh, to learn and to uh, eventually go out on our own and, uh, and uh, become fleet uh, dealers or become fleet salespeople for dealers. Mm -hmm. um, when I started in 79, there were multiple, multiple dealers that handled fleet uh, sales. Uh, back in that time, uh, pretty much everybody went through a dealer to, uh, to order vehicles. We were talking your large leasing companies, we're talking your mid-size leasing companies, we're talking your small leasing companies, we're talking corporate, uh, corporate buyers, and we're talking back then, you could be a, a business buying one vehicle that was considered a fleet as long as it was registered in, in, in the name of the company. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of customers back then. So that offered opportunities for many dealers to be in the business. I don't know how many there were, but I would say nationwide, there had to be, depending on what they didn't fleet, but full service, 50, 75, maybe even more. Easily, uh, easily. Yeah. We, we, yeah. we published our fact book directory and it went on for like four or five pages of just fleet minded dealers. Oh yeah. Oh, it was amazing how many there were out there, but Early in the 1980s, I'm guessing 81, I think it was, I'm not 100% sure, all of a sudden interest rates started to rise. And all of a sudden they more than rose, they escalated. And a lot double of your digit. big, pardon me? Double digit. Uh, yeah, double digits. Rates. And a lot of dealers back then, especially your fleet dealers, had large inventories. When you plan at a certain interest rate, let's assume it was 5%. And all of a sudden, then it's 12%. The cost of inventory killed dealers. It absolutely hurt them. In fact, it forced a lot of them to go into a, a receivership with their finance sources. And eventually, the finance sources closed them down because they couldn't afford to pay the interest rates. Receivables from customers became a problem because they couldn't keep up with the larger interest rates. So the number of fleet dealers that were out there, especially your large ones, dwindled. Now, I don't know mm -hmm. exactly how many we lost in the early 80s due to interest rates, but I was one of them that went out of business, uh, not me, but the company I worked yeah. for. Mm -hmm. so, so then we ended up having to scatter just a tad. We had to go and find our own businesses. Uh, and again, I don't know how many we lost, but we lost quite a few. True. Uh, on top of that, uh, the leasing companies started to uh, buy one another out. They started to combine. So your, 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 your number of, of, of customers started to dwindle. Uh, a lot of companies started to look at reimbursements instead of buying corporate vehicles. So your customer base started to dwindle. So your dealers started to think, hmm, is this a business I want to be into? So there was many that dropped out just because of that. And then as, as, you know, as naturally, you know, all of a sudden competition starts to get a little bit more fierce. And then the margin started to change because dealers were saying, okay, I need to get more business. I need to do this. I need to do that. 
So your margins were reduced and then dealers said, is it worth my time to do this as a margin? Mm. Back in the day, uh, uh, your fleet dealer was basically full service. They, they handled purchases, they handled uh, CDs, they handled, actually help, helped the leasing companies do disposals. And, and CD meaning courtesy and delivery. Yes, courtesy, courtesy deliveries, yes. Mm -hmm. Local stock sales. The company I worked for back then, we had six of us as, uh, as account executives that just handled phone calls all day for stock sales. I mean, that's, that's what it was back then. And today it's different. Mm -hmm. And then somewhere in the 80s, um, more and more companies, the larger leasing companies, decided maybe we can cut out purchasing through a dealer. And all of a sudden we started seeing subcodes. And basically what a subcode is, is a, a, a manufacturer, or not a manufacturer, but a leasing company, a large leasing company, uh, went to a dealer and talked to the manufacturer and said, hey, we're gonna buy X amount of vehicles a year. We'd like to do a subcode. You won't have mm -hmm. to do a thing as a dealer. We'll just order direct, but we need to rent a subcode. So what they did was a lot of dealers decided, yes, they, would, they found that business to be uh, beneficial and they said, we'll do subcodes. And they were paid a certain dollar amount per vehicle that was purchased throughout the year from that leasing company. And, and subcodes also known as secondary dealer codes. The two terms are interchangeable, but Correct. some people might recognize it as a secondary dealer code versus yes. subcode. Yes. And you know, another uh, important thing that happened in that time frame, I would say in the, in the late eighties and eighties seemed to be a very pivotal year for the, the fleet yeah. dealer marketplace. But a lot of the major or several of the major uh, fleet leasing companies, as they were then known, subsequently known as fleet management companies, they actually bought their own dealers in order to handle that themselves. Yes, they did. There was a few mm -hmm. that did do that. And uh, there was uh, one or two that already owned dealers. And that's how they started their leasing business. True. And, most and, of them. And I think, I think the, the, the most known one that we can talk about is uh, Wheels. It was owned mm -hmm. by Zali Frank back in... You know, and that's where he developed his uh, his his uh, leasing company from his dealership, uh, Z Frank Chevrolet, which is no longer in existence. But also what happened then at that point, like you just mentioned, was the fleet management companies. They no longer just uh, offered leasing. Now they said, well, we can probably capture more of the business on a client by offering more services. So to their to 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 their to attribute them, they said, okay, they went into Mr. ABC company and said, we can not only purchase your vehicles, we can now, we can dispose of them, which they were doing, but now they can push that through their remarketing. We can dispose of your vehicles. We can handle all of your license and title needs throughout the country. We can do insurance subrogation. We can do violations, moving violations. You know, it was, it was pretty much a list of all these things that they could do for them. And it kind of captured a lot of companies' attention because they said, okay, one-stop shopping, so to speak. Where mm -hmm. before you might have been using different firms. I think what we kind of referred to the leasing companies as being bundled. You bundle everything into one, one package here, we'll take care of it. So then all of a sudden, I'd say early 90s, as fleet dealers, uh, the term unbundling uh, came about. I knew it by Don Fenton. Yep, Don Fenton was a big pusher of the, of the unbundling. And he didn't keep that to himself. He talked to everybody and said, hey, you know what? It'd be a good idea if you start looking at your clients and saying, unbundle. And he had reasons for it. And, and he used to refer to it as, as a, um, uh, a basketball team. He'd say, you know what? You have five guys out on the floor, okay? And he'd say, not everybody is good at everything. We've well, got one person that's great at offense, a great scorer. You've got one person that's a great playmaker. You've got one person that's a great defensive man and the best rebounder in, in, in the country. He said, but they all are individual entities. So basically he said, instead of going through one, one uh, entity, uh, one FMC, unbundle. Mm -hmm. Find a dealer to, to handle your purchasing. Find a dealer to uh, uh, someone to handle your remarketing. Find someone to handle your insurance subrogation, and tolls, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and let them work as a team. And yet, we you've got the best of uh, the best in the field. So Basically, let's fast forward to today, then, Mike. Uh, what role do fleet dealers play in today's market, then? Well, today it's a little different. There's not as many fleet dealers out there. 
Mm -hmm. And it depends on how you want to look at fleet. You can say fleet is uh, fleet is um, uh, 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 as it was in the past. It's a full service fleet. You can say fleet is a CD dealer. You can fl say fleet is a is a is a uh, uh, drop ship. Dropship dealer, thank you, mm -hmm. and you know, or out of stock dealer. You got all those all those opportunities that you can that you can offer. There's a handful of dealers that do full service. They they work with large corporations uh, in, in their purchasing, unbundled. They mm -hmm. work with uh, with uh, medium sized lease companies that go through them and purchase their vehicles. They work with small lease companies that purchase through them. And they also work with uh, their local community that have smaller uh, fleets. Uh, so they, they, they're, they're in, this, in existence. It really depends on the owner of the dealership, what their thought is on what they want to do with fleet. You also have a, you know, a multitude of CD dealers. And if that's what they consider fleet is, that's great. You also have you know, the larger companies that will call around the country and say, hey, I, I have a need for a stock vehicle. They can call, you know, most dealers can handle it that way. It just, you know, depends on the dealer if they want to work with the margins. Mm -hmm. So what is the role today? I think today that there's still a need for a, 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 a full faceted fleet dealer. So I do see that there is, there is a, a need for a fleet. I think that leasing companies need fleet dealers. I think corporate buyers need fleet dealers. Your local mar market needs fleet-minded dealers. So it's networking. Again, it's networking. I totally agree. And, and I think you're absolutely right. You know, dealers uh, will, are playing and will continue to play a very integral part in the fleet management system. If you were to eliminate dealers from the equation, from this life cycle of ordering vehicles, getting vehicles to end users, you, you would have a, a hole in the system. And I think is uh, the dealerships is what makes that all very seamless. But yeah. unfortunately, Mike, we've reached our allotted time, and uh, I'll have to uh, we'll have to continue this conversation next time. Um, as we've seen, there's a ton of history out there, and we've just really scratched the surface. But with that, I'd like to thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it, and, and I'm honored to be considered as a as the interview or for okay. the interview.